Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today on What's Cooking Wednesday. Today we will have Pam joining us to show us how to make some delicious and easy holiday mocktails and cocktails. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to hop on and our special guest Pam will be joining us shortly. Hey, Ryan. Okay, here we go. So I see, Pam, that you're there. Just be sure to send a request so I can add you on. Let me see. And again, today we are going to be, there we are. Yes. Hey. Hi. How are you? Sorry, I'm just like seeing where you can see my bar and like how far away I have to be. Okay, what's up? There we yes, go. Look at us. And we're matching and we didn't even plan it. There you go. Yes. Hi. How are you? So we'll start by um, just having you tell us about who you are, what you do. Awesome. So uh, my name is Pam Lewisnitzer. I'm based in New York City. Uh, whoa, this light is so bright. Maybe I can take this yeah. down a hot bucket. Um, so it's better. Ooh, that was so shiny. Um, so I'm based in New York City. Um, I'm a mixologist, cocktail, drink making lady. And yeah, I've been working in this industry for over 15 years. Um, nothing I love more than making sure everybody has a great beverage. In the ah, show. love it. <laughs> yes. That's the end goal. And how did you shift when things shut down, especially in New York City? A lot of the work I do has always been consumer based. So um, I've worked behind bars um, at different bars and restaurants for so such a long time. However, over the past 10 years, a lot of my work has been focused on the home consumer. While I love making you drinks at your restaurants, um, the <laughs> thing I love honestly the most is making sure that you can replicate that when you go back home. Because there's a lot of magic in drinking at an establishment. Right. But it's kind of nice to be able to replicate that and have it yourself whenever you want to have it. And um, so a lot of my work really shifted to that. And so during the pandemic, it was quite easy. Um, I actually started doing virtual teaching and classes starting about eight years ago. Oh, wow. So I, I kind of had, I had a leg up a yes. little bit, um, which was really great. And so I got to, I got to take all of that and turn it into the, like toss it into the virtual world. And so I found to teach people around the world how to make drinks. Um, I put up a lot of really funny videos on my Instagram to teach you how to make a cocktail, but just in a really fun and approachable manner so you're not bored yes. for 60 seconds. Yes. And yeah, there's nothing that really fills my heart with more joy than making sure that you're sipping something spectacular and it doesn't have to have alcohol in it. So it could have anything. Anything can be in the glass. And there's a lot of opportunity, depending on the seasonality mm -hmm. of it all, to have something spectacular. Oh, that is awesome. And now in terms of your virtual classes, I know your Instagram people could see is Pam with Pam, P-A-M-W-I-Z. Would they just go on the link in your bio if they want to book a class? So the classes that I book out are done in a corporate manner. So you can contact me if you are interested in booking something for people. I've not done classes where I just open up for free form. Uh, something I could definitely look into for 2022. But mostly if you have a group of friends, you want to get together and you want to learn how to make something and you're still down for the Zoom uh, world or Google Meets or WebEx, whatever what platform yeah. you like to use, Blue Jeans, Microsoft Teams. Like, I think we've all been on all of them. Hang on. So, good. So people can just go onto your Instagram account and see all of the things that you offer. Yes, yes. And you can DM me and I will get going with you. That's perfect. I appreciate it. And um, so today I know we talked about um, cocktails and mocktails. And just for everybody watching, I didn't really have, I had no alcohol in my house. So my husband saved the day. He ran out and got tequila, vodka, and rum. But also, this is how um, creative Pam is. I told her that I didn't have alcohol and that I had bought pineapple juice, cranberry, seltzer, and ginger ale. And she mentioned, I feel like my head's not on the screen. She mentioned that we could really create anything. I also bought heavy cream, because I didn't know if we wanted to do like a winter white mock and cocktail. Um, but really, whatever whatever you think, I'll do. And if you want, this could be your show today, and you could take it away. And, and we'll go I love it. it. So yeah, so that's a big reason why I actually said to you, like, don't go out and buy excessive ingredients, because I want to really show you how you can utilize things that you already have at home to right. make a great drink. Like, the last thing you want to do, especially this time of year, is spend an extra dollar or two when we don't have to. We're already spending money on our loved ones, hopefully. We have the ability to um, those at-home Omicron tests. Yes. Costs, <laughs> but I'm going to, like, so... Nice. 
I'm right you now. don't want to be spending extra money on unnecessary ingredients that you may not use, but you already have a ton of ingredients already in your home. And there's a few things you already have on your screen and some that I'm going to show you from my household to show you how you can utilize that and, and make really delicious, wonderful drinks that are very seasonal, very festive at the same time. Um, yeah. So um, uh, there, you got some wonderful items in front of you. I have some of the same ones, plus some a little differing. Uh, things are a little different. So you've got cranberry juice. I've got pomegranate juice. And I just like to oh, show that those are two very seasonal ingredients. Um, and from here, it's actually something that we can turn into a syrup. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. Do you have sugar at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the few things I will say, see if you have, as if you have sugar, uh, if you have honey, because I'll show you how we can utilize both of those two make a syrup the other thing you can always use is going to be jam uh, a lot of people have jams at home and they they they're in the refrigerators and you're like what am i going to do with this jam and you can always use that um also as a sweetening basis um great so you have um you have your cranberry and you have your yeah pineapple yes. juice um i don't know if you have any citrus at home additionally oranges i have lemons and limes perfect i love a good i love a good citrus bowl so from here we're the sky is literally the limit for us and we have so many things that we're going to be able to make but before you even start making cocktails what you have to start doing first is what we call mise en place mise en place is a french term meaning everything in its place yes. uh, same way as if you're going to cook up a storm in your kitchen you want to mince like your vegetables over here and have your spices ready there before you actually start comp composing your dish right mm -hmm. great when I do my cooking so I love to hear that in terms I never thought to do that for drinks too so I just learned something brand new same thing here, same, same idea. So what I would love to do, I would love to turn our cranberry into a cranberry syrup, Ooh. which would be very fun. Um, but we're gonna use, uh, did you have honey or just sugar? I'll go grab the honey. Great, we're gonna use honey as the base, just cause I wanna show you how fast it is to turn honey into a syrup. Um, I'm gonna use uh, pomegranate juice. So just for everyone who's out there who's watching, hello to everybody who is there, excited to have you. Uh, give a heart if you're like ready for the holiday season. Yeah, uh, we are going to use cranberry and also pomegranate as a means of uh, diluting down the sweetness in the honey, so we can make it um, <clears throat> make it a syrup. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Something in my throat. I know you can't to... you can't cough these days. By the way, you're not. Yeah, allowed. I was just gonna say I have to. I got so used to muting it because you don't want to scare anyone. That <laughs> that's you're not, not allowed. You're not coughing is illegal these days. <laughs> So here's what I'm going to do. So when we make syrups, the idea is having equal amounts of the ingredients in there. Honey is very sweet. So when you want to uh, use honey, I'm going to tell you something right off the bat. This is hard to work with. Do you see how it just like yeah. really sticks to it? Right. It's hard to work with. It's not going to break up. Uh, it won't move around easily in your drink. But this, see this right here and this one, this is a honey syrup. All oh. I did here was I cut the amount of honey in half with water. So I not only did I dilute it, but I took down the sweetness level because this is this is really sweet. Okay, it's that's so smart. It's very sweet. So here's what we are going to do. Either you can use a tablespoon or a teaspoon, okay. um, or if you have a measuring cup, you can also use that as well. Okay. Um, it's up to you. You just need something that you can measure out the same quantities of ingredients. Okay. Okay. And what you're gonna you're gonna start with your honey first. We always start with the thing that is the uh, it's the sweet or the stickiest. I'm all about going sticky and then sweet. Um, and I'd like us to do at the very least about like two tablespoons full of honey. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do one. And if you do eyeball it, guess what? It's going to be okay. We're not working Wait, in like a, 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 three, a two Michelin star restaurant where everything has to be extremely precise. You're making drinks at home. And it's going to be, it's going to be, oh. Okay, I see a lot of friends who are joining on here. It's so nice to see all of you. I haven't done a live in a while, so this is so much fun to see all of your beautiful faces, especially this holiday season. All right, so we have the honey. You have the honey in the glass? Okay, great. It's, yes. So the next thing we're going to do is add equal parts of our either cranberry syrup or I've got pomegranate syrup, uh, pomegranate juice. So you're going to add your cranberry juice. I'm going to add my pomegranate juice to here. And I okay, like so these because... Amount. Equal to the honey? equals to the honey okay and then all you're gonna do is you're going to stir okay. and with and within about 10 seconds of stirring you will pretty much incorporate the honey and your juice together okay. there we go mine's incorporated I've got a syrup so could we do something like that like how you diluted the honey with water and then you can
cranberry um, diluted syrup. Could you do something like that? Sorry, say that, say that again, Jessica. You're cutting out. Could you keep um, like how you have the diluted honey to the side? Could we make something like this, like a cranberry syrup, or just keep it on on hand ahead of time? Yeah, you can always have this on hand. Uh, yeah. Just know that when you're making a honey syrup with water, there it preserves itself naturally because honey is a doesn't break down. It doesn't go bad like sugar does. Oh. When you do have juices in there, it doesn't have the same type of shelf life. So okay. you can always have that on hand at home, but it won't have the same type of shelf life. Okay. So see how fast it was. I want to tell all of you right now who are watching, if you read one of those blogs and it's like, Boil your honey and your water to make the syrup. That's a crock of BF, so you don't have to do that, okay? That's a waste of time. We're not here for wasting time. We're here for efficiency, right? Yes. We don't have that kind of time. Okay, so we're going to put this to the side. Yes, you have your syrup. I love it. Um, so great. So we have a very fun seasonal syrup. What I would like to do is I kind of want to show you how to make two different things today. Okay. Um, I would like to, us to make... Um, are very fun, just like seasonal sour. And then I want to move it over. I want to take over that heavy cream situation. Oh, yeah. Because I think something we all really love is Bailey's, right? We all love Bailey's this time of year. And we're like, oh, yeah, it's so good. But, you know, um, you, you can make it yourself. Oh, okay. It really is just an Irish whiskey um, cream, or just a cream-based uh, liqueur, like a cream-based liqueur that is uh, fortified out with spirit and some sugar. And that's what we'll do on the second part, but we'll make it a little bit minty as well, which will be oh, really fun. Candy canes, we have it all. We have peppermint extract. It is so great. And I, what's fun is that you have, you said you have tequila and vodka, correct? Yes. Great. So I love that you have that um, because <laughs> I think tequila is actually a wonderful addition to this that uh, sometimes people don't utilize. So we'll be using that as well. Um, I just want to make sure, Doc, that you have something to shake with. I have a shaker set right here. Hey, at least that's kitchen, so I have one. For my iced tea. Um, and then for anybody who is watching, uh, who's following along, if you don't have a shaker like this, boop, 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 um, you also can use something like this. You can use a water bottle or a Nalgene, something that you can just literally cap, seal, and shake with ice. Uh, that'll always work. So. I, I, well, I have a shaker, but I don't want to hold you up, so I'll use something else in the meantime. Okay. I no, no worries, and don't worry about holding up. Um, I, yeah, but yeah but it's, it's very important when you are making a drink that you have the ability, especially if it's a shaking cocktail, something with citrus, um, and something we're also going to make a cream-based drink that you can shake with it. I will say if you're on the fly, if you're like going to an in-law's house, there's some family and you don't have the ability to get a shaker, go buy your local like vitamin shop or someplace and get a protein shaker. Those absolutely, yeah, those absolutely work the best. There you go. <laughs> and they have a natural um, opener at the top, so you can just strain out very easily. Perfect. Okay, so I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to get started. I think yeah. what I want to do. I yep. want to get started. Um, okay, so we are going to be making a classic sour and a sour style cocktail, or they call it a daisy, um, is a drink that's going to have three ingredients. It's going to have something sour, something sweet, and something spirited in it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all it's, it takes. And what we can do from there is we can manipulate one of those areas or a bunch of those areas to add a lot more flavor and flair into this drink. Um, and additionally, yeah, additionally, if you want to kick it up a notch, like you've got pineapple juice, you could always add pineapple juice to this. For today, just because we have, um, you know, some people here, I want to keep it simple to show you how you can just make something and move on, move and grow it from there. We are going to keep it a little more locked down, okay. but feel free to so have some more fun with it. Okay, right. here we go. So um, we are always going to start with our least expensive ingredient first when we measure something out. If you don't have a measuring tool, like I have about 20 million jiggers in my house, and a okay. jigger is a measuring device we use to measure units of liquid that go into the glass, okay? This one happens to be one ounce and two ounces. Okay. If you don't have this, a tablespoon, a measuring tablespoon will work really well. Grab that. I have that. Great. So a tablespoon equals, a tablespoon equals um, a half an ounce, and that's a really great conversion rate to always remember when you're making a drink. That's easy enough. So you're making it very easy. Thank you. The whole point of uh, the whole point of having cocktails is it for for it to be easy. Yes, easy and fun and light. I'm all about that life. <laughs> all about that life. Okay, so here we are. Um, so we are going to start with our least expensive ingredient first, which is going to be the syrup that we already made. Okay. This is why we make it first. Um, we are going to add 0.75 ounces, or so three fourths of an ounce of that. So that's going to equal one and a half tablespoons. Okay. And what kind of I put it in or does it not matter? What do you say? 
what kind of cup should I put it in? I have one of these. I have a martini. Well, it's up to you. If you want to, I'm going to put mine in a low ball glass over ice. So like you can just decide it can be in a wine glass. It can be in a low ball glass. I'm going to use this glass. Oh, perfect. Okay. Maybe I'll use it. Like... Yeah. Perfect. So that is, that is something that's very easy. So uh, we're going to do three fourths of an ounce. If you're somebody who likes things a little bit sweeter, you can feel free to add another quarter ounce and make this a full ounce. Okay. Um, drinking subjective. I'm I just going to remind everyone that drinking is very subjective. So please make this the way you want it to be. <laughs> and it's right to the shaker? Right, right to the shaker, right. And there's no ice. We never add ice until the very end because we don't want to over dilute our drink. Okay. All right. All right. So we have 0. 0.75 ounces in there. The next step is going to be adding in some type of acidity. Um, you said you have both lemons and limes, correct? Limes, but I also have oranges. Oh, amazing. Okay, so here's the thing about acidity in a sour, sour cocktail. Lemons and limes are going to have uh, the acidity that's going to make your drink pop. Oranges aren't that acidic. As much as they might, like, give us, like, belly aches if we have too much of it, it's not the same type of acidity that's going to make your drink pop. So when you're trying to make a sour, sour drink, you shouldn't really just use orange juice and that's it. If you ever use orange juice, you need to supplement it as well with some lemon or lime like, to go with it. Okay. So that's something really good to know. Um, I have lemon, a lemon here. I tend to like lemon juice a little bit more during this season uh, for some of my drinks, only because it's not as sharp as a lime. Ah. Uh, but to each their own. You know, to each their own. Um, I do prefer fresh juice. So if you have the ability to get a lime or a lemon, please get a lime or a lemon. Okay. It makes all the difference in your in your drink. You want to put good things in your body, right? We want to honor our bodies. You can yeah. say whatever you want about things that come in plastic bottles that keep on your, yeah, that keep in your shelves of your fridge for a long time. Maybe that's not being so good to yourself. <laughs> uh, so please, absolutely uh, try to use fresh juice as much as we can. And I'm not sure, Doc, if you have a juicer yeah. like this. If you don't, it's okay. You can also use your hands. You can, yes, we could put a fork in it and, and juice it around. If you have not purchased all of your Christmas gifts, this is five or seven dollars, and I cannot tell you how much usage you'll get out of it, yeah. right? I use it all the time. All the time. Five, seven dollars. It is literally a stocking stuffer, or for a really good dear one, the main gift you give them, okay? Yeah. You know? yeah. Main gift. It really means that you care. That's what yeah. I'm say. It does, but you could use it for cooking and for making drinks, so it's, it's yeah. very okay. So, All right, so we are going to add the same amount of citrus as we did sweetness, so I'm going to add 0.75 ounces of my lemon into my drink. Look how easy so. it is. Great this tool is everybody. It's the best tool. I yeah. can't I I mean the amount of like friends I've gotten these for I like go to their house and I'm like you don't have a juicer and you're Yeah. Making... I wish I thought of that sooner. It's I don't okay. have Donald's on but Donald didn't have a garlic mincer and press so I I've made I've made plenty of drinks at Donald's house so I know that he has a pretty, pretty good setup, but we'll make sure that yes, we sort it out. Okay, so the next step is going to be our main spirit. Yeah. This is where it's kind of like choose your own adventure style. Sour sour cocktails are great because they kind of go with everything, but it's good to think about some of the base flavors that you have in your drink. So you've got cranberry, I've got pomegranate, and you see what you have available. So I know you have some vodka. I also say cranberry is really stellar with gin. If you happen to have gin at home, that's a really great flavor combo factor. Um, I've got pomegranate so I also can go vodka just do like a classic like vodka sour if you wanted to okay. it, is, it is up to you something I will suggest and tell people is infusions are really fun and easy to do so if you know that you're going to be entertaining some people later in the night get up in that morning take out your spirit like vodka or something pour it over some cinnamon sticks and some clove and let it sit all day then take out the spices and you can use that as the base which adds another layer wow. of flavor into your drink you have to strain it after or you could just do that and then you just straight yeah you just straight out straight out the main wow. pieces and then pop it back into the bottle mm -hmm. okay so we're going to be adding two ounces of our spirit so if you're using that tablespoon that's going to be four tablespoons oh i'm reading that fact is gluten-free i see well i'm going to let you in on a good good secret all spirits are gluten-free ah i just learned something new see if anybody yes. has you. It's a it's a nice marketing ploy when they're like it's gluten free, but technically through distillation process, um, everything is gluten free. The only times you have to worry is sometimes in liqueurs they can add back some flavors. Okay. Um, but any any just any distilled spirit is gluten free. You can go onto the celiac website, 
Wow. And so I, if there's anyone here in the comments who are just like, that's not true, I'm telling you, go on to see yeah. that. Okay, it's, um, marketing is an amazing, yeah. amazing thing, right? Okay, so here's, here's my favorite part. Here's where we get to take a moment to taste, taste what's in our glass. You might want to take a spoon to do it, give it a stir. It's where you get to say, like, is this sweet enough for me? Do I need some more of syrup? Is this perfect? Do I love it? I kind of love it. Um, something else I kind of like to do, I like to shake. I sometimes like to shake with a little bit of spice. I got about this small little baggie of uh, ground cinnamon. Um, so I'm going to add like the teeniest pinch of ground cinnamon to this before I shake. You don't have to do that, by the way. Um, it is just an option. This is before you shake is when you can do things like this. You can add a pinch of cinnamon or you can add some fresh mint leaves and make it a smash. Yeah. That sounds really good. I never even thought of adding these kind of flavors. I'm, I don't drink a lot of alcohol, so I never really thought of this. Okay. Now, also, I want to just point out that if you would like to make this non-alcoholic, it's quite easy to do that. There are a bunch of non-alcoholic distilled um, spirits on the market, things like Liars or Seedlip or Ritual that you uh -huh. can buy that are zero proof. The other thing that I like to do here is either use coconut water as a base or sometimes brew up a really strong white tea. Ooh. And that's also really great as the base. Mm -hmm. that's um, you could also, and you could also use um, a pineapple juice as well, but I would just take down the amount of pineapple juice by half an ounce because it can get a little sweet. Okay. So just so you know, like this drink is a very simple way that you can make it nice and non-alcoholic. Yes. We also like to call that zero proof. Okay, you ready for the, the best part of the, of the whole thing? Ready for the best part. Yes. All right, so when we are shake this, we like to ice our glass at the same time that we like to ice our tin. So if you're putting ice in your glass, I want you to get that all iced up and also put ice in your tin, but do not shake yet. Okay. Sure. So, put ice so I'm going to, I always have to do this. I have to like beat up my ice before I... And I have a very aggressive ice maker, so bear with me. <laughs> oh my gosh. What did that ice maker ever do to you? Let's do this, ready? Oh, what did it ever do to you? All right, this ice is like nice and sticky. It's like sticking together, it's really great. Okay, fabulous, I did it. All right, all right. Fantastic. Okay, I'm back. All right, moment of truth. So here's where we're going to start shaking. Okay. So I want you to cap and seal it, but do not shake yet because we're going to just talk about the fundamentals of shaking really fast because I've seen Ooh, yeah. everyone shake and everyone Ooh, shakes yeah. terribly okay. until they have a lesson with me and then they shake a whole lot better. Okay, <laughs> shaking is not this, and it's not this, and it's not this. Okay. Shaking is moving the ice from the bottom of your tin to the top, to the bottom, to the top in a very aggressive manner. The idea is that we want to aerate, agitate, and activate this drink. And the only way you can do that is by using a very repetitive and vigorous method and shaking and motion of shaking, okay? So it's amazing, just by the way, if we forget, our arms are so long, right? <laughs> and our wrists, they can move in such incredible ways. And when you put it all together, you have this amazing range of motion. I find it easier to shake over my shoulder. It's also good to make sure you have your hands over any opening as well. But like you can't get Michelle Obama arms if you shake like a wuss. Okay, you hear me? So we're gonna shake this drink very vigorously for seven seconds. I'm gonna count us down. Okay. Does that sound good? You ready to go? Perfect, I'm ready. I always wondered why they shake over the shoulder. Okay. Because it gives you a little bit more stability because here you don't get the same depth range of motion as you do behind your shoulder. Also, if you're shaking and it opens for any reason, the person behind you gets soaked and you don't. So it's safer. You wanna come over here? Just kidding, okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Here okay. we go, ready? In three, two, one, go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oh my God. Great, great, okay. So it's nice because you have a kind of, you kind of have a built-in mechanism for pouring out uh, your drink. For those who might be doing it from a shaker like this at home, this is called a Hawthorne strainer. Okay. This is the cage on top. We're gonna use that to hold back the ice. Oh, I'm gonna do that too. I'm gonna use another strainer. I don't have the Hawthorne strainer right now, but I'll. Use okay. It. You also can just pop it open and use it pour it from the top of it. So oh. you don't have to. Yeah, because you have that little opening, right? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm realizing that it's out, but is that okay? I'm just. Yeah, it should be fine. 
Okay. Or you can do that big one if you want to, too. That's aggressive, but I like it. Okay. So, um, and a lot of people ask me, they're like, why don't we just use the ice that's in the tin? Why do we have to pour it over fresh ice? And it's because the ice that's in the tin is what we call spent ice. Like, it's already spent its time making your drink cold. Interesting. It's tired. It's used. And you don't want that in your cocktail. You want something fresh and new. Fresh face, fresh and new. So the spent ice is used and discarded to the side. You put fresh ice on top. You know you've got a well shaken sour when you have this beautiful foaminess on top. Oh yes, is that like similar to like an old fashioned? It's funny I didn't shake as well. You can see who the pro is and who's so old. Old fashions are going to be stirred, so you never get that foaminess on top. Okay. Um, it's always only going to be something that has citrus in it will create that. Um, for garnish, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, I have some pomegranate seeds here. Oh, come on, open. Oh, get them, and it's funny. I checked. Two I can find them anywhere. Um, fairway, it's great. <laughs> I will buy a pretty good grocery store. Okay, so I'm just gonna, it's nice you can like float like a few of these like pomegranate seeds on top, which is really cute. Um, I also am here for like an edible garnish moment. Yes. Other the things you can do if you're kind of like hard up for time and you want to make something that you can keep for a long time. Um, I also have these dehydrated citrus peels that look beautiful. Oh, right. Can you make those ahead of time? Is it you can, you can just pop these in the oven on parchment paper. Um, slice out some citrus, pop it at the lowest, lowest temperature your oven goes, leave it in for about six hours, pull it out. And you just put it right on top of the drink? Yep, you can lay it, you can lay it right on top of the drink and it's really, really gorgeous, but. Wow. A very simple, a very simple sour. Unbelievable, that, cheers. Cheers, let me know how your drink is. It is so good, you can taste like the hints of cinnamon. And you take a little crammer, and the, the vodka flavor isn't overpowering, which I like. No, the vodka won't be overpowering, because when you put it everything in, in the right ratio, yeah, like we did here, two, two ounces, 0. 0.75. Sorry. And yes. Awesome. And it's very so fragrant, too. You can smell the, um, you can smell yeah. the and the cinnamon. You definitely, definitely smell it. So there's the one thing is that, while we're enjoying this, we just have to quickly rinse out our tins because we don't want them to get sticky. And you don't have to do you don't have to do much. You just honestly have to just rub it under some water. So I'm just gonna get some water going. Okay. Um, and now the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make another little sim uh, syrup really fast before we we're gonna do a fast shake up of like an uh, essentially our own homemade Bailey's. So interesting. Okay. And for those of you guys just joining, let's just cocktail. And you cocktail as Pam said and you can follow her and DM her for some corporate classes like that. Okay so I have another measuring cup and I'll rinse out the other shaker. Um, I just want to show like while we're getting ready that if you know making all these syrups and some things are hard you just want to kind of use a liqueur instead of which liqueurs are great because they have a bit more booze. They also have some sweetness and spices in there. If you want to pick up something that's great for the holiday season, um, things that I use are uh, ingredients like this. This is called sorrel um, and sorrel is a high, um, a sorrel, like a sorrel spiced based uh, liqueur that's made here uh, in New York. Oh. So this is a great, this is a great option that you can, you can buy and uh, in your local markets or online. Um, and some other fun things, like there's a really great company called House, and House is more of like a vermouth base. Um, and I like this, like this one is a bitter clove. So this adds like a lot of the spices into your drink and you can just add like at a half ounce increments. Yes. Or you can make a long drink, like especially with the ginger ale that you have there, you could do a, like a long drink with okay. it, with a bit of this, maybe a little bit of whiskey and ginger ale, so. Actually, now that you're saying this too, I just thought of the best, <laughs> going crazy in the other room, but I just thought of a great gift idea, people can, give a friend a bottle of something that you mentioned and then organize a class through you, buy them classes from you and then present them with the liquor and, and do that as a, an incredible gift. I am your gift this season. Oh, I, think, I think it's a fun thing. I think people need I, to connect. I've always, listened. I've always wanted to be tied up in a bow and be given to someone. So yes. I'm ready, I think me out. People want to connect, people looking for fun. Like people have been through enough now. And I think right. for real, that's what, another reason why I appreciate you being on the show today, because people really just need a break. And I think whether you drink alcohol or you don't, the process is fun, the drinks are fun, and we just need to all connect and chill and have fun. So thank you. 100%. That, I think that's 100% what it is. And yeah. it's, a very, it's a very difficult and overwhelming time. And there's a lot of serious, there are a lot of serious things happening in the yeah. world right now. And something that is not serious and never will be serious 
are drinks. Right. So <laughs> drinks are merely supposed to be something that creates social situations, uh, an ability for people to connect with one another. So let this always stay as a very fun, fun thing it's while the, fun. the world might be burning. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Okay. So before we, we rush into making the next thing, all we have to do is make, again, one small syrup. Okay. Um, now, it's going to be easiest if you have access to some warmer water. It doesn't have to be boiling, yes. but something that's going to be like hot. It can come from your sink. Okay. So um, even if you want to let it run for a little bit, what we're just going to do is make a, a very, very classic, simple syrup. Um, I'm going to be using some brown sugar to do it, but white sugar works as well. You can use any kind of sugar source. And it's the same concept. The concept is equal parts sugar and water mixed together. So I've got, I'm going to use a little bit of my dark brown sugar. I love how this smells. I really do love using dark brown sugar for this reason because it smells so good. Yes, you can smell it. So, all right. So again, you're just going to have to get um, any type of tablespoon, something you can measure with. Okay. Uh, it, even if you don't know the quantity of the spoon uh, or what the measuring source is, as long as you're using equal amounts of it, you're fine. So if you find a nondescript spoon in your drawer, just make sure you're being consistent with the usage of it, okay? So again, if you can, we're going to do two tablespoons of your sugar. Okay. And I kind of like dark brown sugar because it adds like a, a little bit of like a, a deepness um, to your drink, which is very fun. A lot more, a little bit more depth, but you know, I, but I use any, every kind of sugar under the sun for cocktails. Oh, brown, white sugar, dark brown, light brown. It works. Now here's the thing is I always say that your, your water source should be at minimum room temperature, but it is honestly, <laughs> it's honestly best. Sorry, I'm putting my tea kettle back. If okay, you can okay. get it to be hot, um, the hotter, the hotter, the better. Sorry, I like all this stuff putting that in the sink for the wash later. The hotter, the better. Uh, that way it just melts a little bit faster, okay. but it doesn't have to be boiling. All right. Okay. As we all can remember from science class, by the way, science is my worst grade ever. And <laughs> my mother could tell you that, but science is always incorporated in drink making. And one of the areas I love to remind people is the idea of friction and what happens when we create friction. But the, do you remember what a byproduct of friction is? Hold on, I know this, I'm a scientist. Uh, give me a hint. <laughs> Heat, heat's a byproduct of friction, right? So when you are, when you're forcing movement around between like the water and the sugar, and you're like, you're uh, forcing it around like, in, and mixing it together really quickly, you're creating friction and friction creates heat, which allows it to melt faster, yeah. right? Yeah. Science, I love it. Okay, so I, mine is done. Mine too. It didn't take very long. See, it took like just roughly around like 20 seconds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which could also be translated into a mocktail, and Pam's gonna surprise us with what it is. So, so far with the sugar. Okay, on. so do this one thing move your pineapple juice to the side so we can see everything that you're doing. Okay. Fabulous, so much better. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I know we all love Bailey's, I love Bailey's, you love Bailey's, as long as you're not lactose intolerant, you love Bailey's as well. But you don't have to go out and have to buy a bottle of it. In fact, you can make it at home because really all Bailey's is is a cream Irish cream liqueur which mm -hmm. means that there's sugar cream and Irish whiskey in it so what you can do is you can make your own version at home and you can add little like twists to it um, add a little bit of liqueurs and things that you like to add some additional flavor you might be someone who loves like chocolate and mint Ooh. oh yeah and this might be your opportunity to do that so and then the other thing I also want to point out is maybe you have maybe you're lactose intolerant yeah so I, I love this you don't have to use cream. You can use like something I love using is oat milk. Oh. Okay. We want to make sure that a lot of sensitivities to different foods and allergy restrictions. It doesn't mean that you have to be separated from the fun. Yeah. You can I always be included. Um, are vegan even. So I found this for any of people, any of my vegan followers. It's a coconut cream and almond milk. And then you can, also, right? So either one. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do is essentially make a single serving of our, per, of our cream liqueur. Um, now, if you don't have Irish whiskey, guess what? It's okay. In fact, there are a lot of other there are a lot of other things that work really well um, in this type of drink, and tequila is actually one of them. Especially because we're also going to pop in a little bit of mint into this. So we've got to make this like a minty situation, which is going to be great. So let's go back and let's start again with our sweetness source, right? So that's why we made our simple syrup. Because our simple syrup is going to add that sweetness that we want in this drink. Okay. 
So we are going to add 0.75 ounces. So that's one and a half tablespoons. Okay. Of shaker, right? What do you say? I'm adding it to the shaker. Adding it to the shaker. Yes. Okay. Hello to everyone who's who's coming in. Nice to see you all. Yes. Thank you guys for joining. Happy holidays. We are making some cocktails. Holiday cocktails. Yes. Easy. Easy to prepare. Holiday cocktails. Okay. So we have that sweetness source in there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add the cream now. I like to add this first because it sometimes will make whatever it is that you're measuring out of a little bit like creamy, smooth, silky, creamy, and you want to clean it out after with the other liqueurs you're going to put in, right? We can always clean out our sources. Um, I like to add in an ounce and a half. Okay. If you want more, go for it. But if you don't, if you want less, that is also okay. Again, I'm using um, an oat milk. Okay. You can use the almond, the coconut almond. Yeah. And if you like it, if you like yours a little bit more creamy, you can add some more. I always pull back just a bit because some people don't like the intensity of the dairy in it. But again, if you can add more, especially if you're using something a little lighter, like an almond milk or an oat milk, you could go up to two ounces. Okay. But I'm always going to just give you that ounce and a half. Can you it's right. Okay. Already you can smell the peppermint schnapps is really intense. <laughs> I haven't had pepper. Okay. Oh, no, we're back. So yeah, peppermint shops is like, what if I just took a swig of this? Peppermint shops <laughs> is really, really intense. And you don't want to use too much of it because too much of it can overwhelm it. So I like to always pull back. It's always good to pull back in the beginning and do more later. So I like to just add a quarter of an ounce. If we uh, don't that's good. So that's gonna be half a tablespoon. If we don't have an extract or no peppermint extract or is that you can do that. If you do extract, please use like like half a teaspoon, not even like just like a few a few drops of it. I think I'll do yeah, like very small amount. Like a few drops. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. There. And then the next step is going to be adding in either our Irish whiskey or our tequila. And you can go up to two ounces. You can take it down to like an ounce and a half if you'd like to. I'm gonna use some Irish whiskey here. You're gonna use tequila. I like the fact that it all kind of goes together in it. It's tasty. Okay. And again, and I always like to give this a little bit of a taste just to make sure you know where the sweetness level is. Okay. Because some people like things sweeter, some people don't. It is totally, again, it's up to you. And some people want it like a little bit more dairy in it. Um, again, I like to pull back. I don't want too, too much dairy. And you can always add more, right? If it's not, it's like add yeah, less this way, you can just always add more if you need. You can always add more. So my grandmother, my grandmother was 99 when she makes chicken soup, uh, when she made chicken soup a whole lot more, um, especially in the past, she never salted it a lot. And I always asked her why, and she always goes, you can add as much salt as you want at the end, but you can never take it out. Once yes, it's true. the same thing with preparing food. Yeah. Now, just like we did put spices in the last one, it's up to you. I have a lot of spices around the house because naturally I do this for a living. <laughs> um, but I have fresh nutmeg, which is something I'll put on the top, but I like to put a little bit of nutmeg in this before I shake. Um, it just adds like some really wonderful fragrance uh, notes onto it. So, all right, and we're gonna do the same kind of shaking situation. Hi, Christian. Christian, if you want this drink afterwards, let me know. I'll run it down to you. He's my neighbor, and he always gets all the cocktails that I make anytime I mix. <laughs> okay, good. So I added some nutmeg. Great. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shake, and the best part is I already gave you the shaking tutorial, so you know what to do. Um, let's also make sure we have like the the proper glass that we would like this to be in. Mm, let me see which glass I want to put this in. I want this in. Ooh, I like, I kind of like this. It's kind of a, like, a little sexy situation. So we're gonna ice our glass that we're, we're gonna- Ice to the glass? Yeah, ice in the glass you want. It's just a little very nice like wine glass moment to be honest. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll add some ice to the glass. Okay, ice in the glass, ice in our tin. Okay. Okay. All right, and then we're going to start shaking. So again, for who are, anyone who's joining in now, when we shake, we shake because we want to make our drink nice, fluffy, airy, we want to force air into that. And the only way we can do that is by shaking things up. All right, we ready? Oh, Christian said it's an honor to get the best cocktails in town. You are, yeah, you have a pro here, Christian. I pay him a lot to say that. So. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, are we ready? Okay, I'm ready. We got three, two, one, two, one. Two, three, four, five, six, 
and seven. Great. And phenomenal. I like this because this is going to be a really frothy, frothy drink. Okay. And here you have it. It's like the same color as Bailey's. Oh. This one's nice because it's got a little peppermint vibe to yeah. it. And, and it doesn't have to be peppermint. Like you can add things like vanilla extract. You can add things like a creme de cacao, like a chocolate liqueur if you'd like to. Um, there's lots of really fun ingredients and elements you can add to this. What and just like I put a little bit of nutmeg in there, I'm also going to finish it off with a little dusting of nutmeg because there's nothing like a nutmeg top drink. What are your thoughts on when people like put it around the rim of the glass? Does that take away from it? The on, on doing what? Like if people crush candies I've seen and they put it somehow, would that take that away? Is, that's, listen, that's great. That's fine. That's fine. You can also just have this and like hang a candy cane on the side. Which okay. is really cute. I actually happen to have one. It's actually wrapped. Look at that. See? See? Okay, so that's fun. And you can also put it in there to like stir it up with. Um, yeah, like lots of lots of options and uses. Uh, but again, a single serve. But you can make more of it, obviously, for as many people as you want. And so easy to make. So easy to make, right? And it really could carry you through the whole winter in terms of it doesn't need to definitely be just like the season now. It could be all the way through winter. All the way through winter. And guess what? If you want this for the summer, no one's stopping you. Yes, exactly. And you can even, like you said, add the coconut water instead or add like different coconut flavors to it. It's so easy. And I because I have a shaker, I don't know where it is, how you show that people can use really anything they have around the house. Um, protein mixed drink, shaker thingy. You can do it all. A strainer. What was that strainer called again? A Jimmy? No. A Hawthorne strainer. Where did I get Jimmy from? Hawthorne strainer. Yeah. So if you don't have the tools, yeah, see, but this again might be a fun gift where you could give someone the Hawthorne strainer. This, a bottle of liquor, and then buy them some classes with Pam. I'm not, Pam didn't ask me to promote, but I just think it's such a fun way, fun thing to do, a fun gift to give somebody. Oh, right. speaking of dogs here, Percy, come here, come here. Sorry, he like, he like was grabbing at my leg, so here, here, you all get my dog. So, um, he gets so upset when I'm, on, when I'm teaching a class. Yes, what's his name? His name is Rick. Oh, my Holiday Rick. Yes, I love an animal with a person's name. And yours? This is Presley. She's a girl, but her name's Hi. Hi. Right? Yeah. So I think, I mean, I th at the end of the day, you know, when it comes, when it comes to any cocktails, when it comes to holidays, what I really want everyone to remember the most is I want you to remember to keep it seasonal. Please don't be making blackberry mojitos right now. That makes <laughs> no sense. And blackberries aren't a season. So stick to local ingredients. Ask your local marketplace what is fresh or go to a farmer's market. They won't lie there. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Um, think about also the other things that you're eating and drinking, like hot chocolates, mulled wines. You know, peppermint is a really big flavor right now. Um, there's like a lot, of, like a lot of spices, a lot of jams, yeah. um, and really uh, keep within that context when you're making things, mm -hmm. in order to really amplify the flavors that are already at your table uh, when you come and eat. Yeah. And get and get a little creativity. Um, just think about portion sizes, how things mix together, and again. As often as you can use good ingredients for yourself, fresh ingredients, that's going to make all the difference yeah. when you mix up a drink. I love it. And it also, like you said, the liquor too, it could really pull a table together. Even just having the drinks on the table, it could, it could pull it. So I appreciate this so much. And as Pam said, it doesn't have to be difficult. Like, I have no idea. I've never really made drinks. You made me feel very professional. And this is incredible. Where's my other drink so I could show everybody else? <laughs> Do incredible drinks with just limited things around the house. So I appreciate this so much. So everybody, make sure you go follow Pam on Instagram, DM her, and set up some classes. Thank you for having me. Happy holidays. Yes, you too. Happy holidays. I appreciate this so much. Of course. Stay safe. Everyone stay safe. Drink well. And be nice to be. Listen, be good to yourself right now. And please, be kind to other people. Yes. We're all going through a difficult time. Be it's kind to strangers. As best we can. And let's not forget that. All right. Thank you, Pam. Cheers. Bye, cheers. Bye.